Yes. Samanani, hello everybody. Welcome to Attention Show. The voice of the entertainment industry. This is your host, Gaddafi, Gaddafi Manafi. San Bonani, welcome. Um, today we have um, today we have one of our, I don't know, for me as one of the best uh, jazz musicians who is now is 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 known, but not is not out there as as much as I would love her to be out there, <laughs> and. Um, I'm looking so much like you know when you have so much expectations, moment Like it's not your dreams. It's 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 not it's not your talent, but it's your dream. Because she they she belongs out there. Like this is just one of those people that I just feel would say they belong to a bigger platforms and you know to be heard by a large number of people and uh, you know. And oh humble man, like oh oh lano, yeah, I mean if I had her talent, guys, when you saw your shame. But okay, uncle uncle was yeah, she would see yeah, what I know because of a problem. So let me not just, you know. Uh so uh, uh let me just welcome her before any further ado. <laughs> So the seed, uh, I don't even I'm even saying it right. So so the seed, right? I'm saying it right. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome to Attention Show. How are you? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes. Uh, how are you doing this morning? I've been I've been okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been better. I've yeah. Been better. Yes. Thank you for How making you? time for us. I'm good, thanks. I'm good. I can't complain. On for sex saying and I'm trying. Yes, let's go. Yes, sis. It's not me. It's not you. Oh girl. Anyway, anyway, let's make it useful and uh, make it worth yeah, it. Uh, for sure. um uh, so I'll just introduce you. Also, the seed is a music educator. She's a jazz musician and a performer. Um, I love the the educator part. You know, I love education. 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 I love I love education. I love education. I love education. I love education. Thank you for coming to, uh, for allowing, actually for giving us the time. And it's very important for me. Thank you so much. First Thank thing, you first thing, me. let's, <laughs> yes. So uh, one thing, when I, when I did uh, my bit of research there and going through your profile, I saw that you, you were a drama. And I think I, I mentioned this because for me, it's like a wow, you know, because you're a vocalist and now being a drama, I just never imagined you because maybe because I've never seen you playing drums. <laughs> Tell us about that. Can you stop there? Listen, oh, being oh. a drama, oh my God. We're now speaking about my past. Although yeah. if we were to talk in, 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 in other people's like appreciators terms, other people feel yeah. I should have just continued being a drama. But um, wow. it was lovely at the time, you know, being a drama yeah. going overhead. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was just starting off in the music industry and I was still studying at the time. Um, yeah. So, and it's a funny story how it actually happened because, you know, I'm a PK. So I grew up in church. So whenever there was no drama, I kind of would <laughs> fill in because we needed a drama. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love I love PK stories because it's like you always have to step in for dad. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah, you have to. You have to. You had no choice. 
You had to make yeah. it happen. So it yeah. was one of those situations as well at school when the band um, had one of their drummers go uh, to join the army, and so they didn't mm. have a drummer. So now wow. this friend of mine, I don't know, if, I don't know if you know Cindy, Cindy Nene. She was one of the um, uh, top contestants on the on Idols. Actually, she. Mm. Excuse me. She won, I think, the third, whatever. So she yeah. she was a, she was a friend of mine at the time, and um, yeah. she was just like, you know, she heard me play around and stuff, and she was like, oh, you know what, you can maybe you can just help us, you know, during rehearsals, and that's how I got into the band. You know, it was really yeah. it was helping out with rehearsals, and then it ended up being me the drama. You know, so wow. Um, and then on, it was just beautiful having to kill the stereotypes, you know, behind the instrument that is male dominated because yes. you know, not yes. so many people, not so many women play yeah. um, that instrument. So, yeah, it was yeah. quite interesting. Actually, j just mentioning it, and, and I think that's where the shock is because we don't have much or, or many women, you know. Uh, females playing drums it can be bass and, and you know p uh, barking keys piano but it's hardly drama i think i only know one person mm. who actually plays drums as a female anyway uh back to back mm. to you how's how's covid been like how's covid been personally oh. work-wise how has it been in durban hello can okay. you hear me? So, yes. yes, I can hear you now. Uh, so COVID has been quite difficult. Eh? I, I'd like to think for everyone, not just for us, but mostly for yeah. us artists. You know, we were hit the most yeah. because, yeah. Um, you know, we work with numbers, you know, and um, I realized that we're very much comfortable even when the world was kind of moving towards the, the digital, virtual kind of world. We we're still just stuck mm -hmm. into, you know, you know, live performances and having to see and being with your audience. I mean, I understand yeah. it's the most authentic and and the most, you know, um, very close interaction, humanly interaction that you can have with your audience. And then mm -hmm. when 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 COVID hit, it was just like, oh. And then, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah, you had everyone had to, in a way, explore their boundaries, you know, as to how else can you reach to your audience, you know, other yeah. than what you already know. And that was very yeah. difficult because one had to undo certain things that they were so familiar with. You had to learn, mm -hmm. uh, learn new things. Um, yeah. It was just so hard, you know what I mean? So, yeah. but things are in a way slowly starting to pick up but it's it's not the same you know what i mean we still need to um be in, be in line with uh with the digital world because that's where the yeah. world is now you know of course of course and uh that's what i always say that if we get used to the fact that we are now moving we are not going back to where we used to be you know things are going sure. to change dramatically and if we find a way so for you how did you find a way to actually become you know to adjust to the digital world is there any changes that you made around you girl girl <laughs> i had to go buy a keyboard i had to go buy you know <laughs> <laughs> what you call yeah. a better laptop that would allow me to record and do things you know yeah. like there's certainly yeah. uh bigger steps that i think on a normal scale i wouldn't have thought about it if we were just in our previous normal I remember, world but because i remember last time yeah. sorry last time when we were doing the awards you were yes. telling me hey my laptop just shut down let me wait for it to wake up but now COVID forced you to go <laughs> And buy it. <laughs> Those were the early stages, and I'm just like, and the phone I had was not, it doesn't even deserve to be called a phone. It wasn't a proper phone. <laughs> it, it was it was diff ah, it was hard, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm seeing other videos um of other artists that you you uh you actually um hosted as well. Um mm. and I'm just seeing I'm just like guys, I could have done better, you know. And you <laughs> see the gap as to you need to do better. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah. But we conquered. Yeah. I mean, COVID is still here, but we survived. We thank God that, you know, yeah. um, like we are still, you know, because we've lost a lot of, yes. um, not yeah. only artists, but family members, friends, and, you know, communities mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. So as in as in gain of your guesses, you to chill or two by no Zoe the siege, why the name Zoe the siege? And Uvela P Ukulele P Ukunde P etc. Okay. Uh Zoe the Seed, uh when I grew up in Southland there, I did my high school there. Um Jay, I'm a swati girl, you know. Um but um, when I when I finished my high school, um, I joined. Um, well, I I came this side because my dad is in P3 Deep, so I just decided. You know, actually, the initial idea was to go study, not a very like music related. Uh, um, um, I was literally going to study accounting, believe it or not, and then wow. um, that didn't work out, and then I found myself having to come uh, and apply in Guazul Natal. In my heart of hearts, I wanted to do music, but my, you know how parents are with music and stuff, you know, yes, I understand, you know yes. what I mean? But yeah. Um, so, but I just, you know, even when I applied the first time, I thought, you know what, I'll apply what they want me to apply, but when I get there, I'm going to change to what I actually want, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. when, when that didn't happen, and then I got the second chance to actually apply for what I really wanted, which was music, but mind you, I didn't know what kind of music I wanted to do. It jazz mm -hmm. was not anywhere near my radar. Okay, like wow. I was a, yeah. like I told you, I was a church girl, so probably anything close to like gospel or something like that was you know <laughs> best bet. Yes, yes. <laughs> So anyway, then I enrolled at the University of Guazul Natal, and obviously, University of Guazul Natal only it either offered uh, classical music or music or um, jazz and popular mm. music. But popular wasn't yeah. as popular as the name, but yeah. <laughs> jazz was was, <laughs> was the problem, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so I thought, you know what? Oh, actually, I found myself in the program because. After my audition, and they're just like putting me in groups, and then in first class, and then everybody's like talking about jazz. I'm like, no, I didn't sign up for this, you know. Yeah, and then, yeah. um, <laughs> but then the, it was too late to change. Everything was paid up for. I just mm -hmm. had nothing to do. I had to do it. So I always say to people that ask me about my journey that um, I feel like jazz found me more than yeah. having to find it and yeah. um and i thank god for that because it gave me a sense of expression because i like to think that i was i was in a bit of a limited um position as far as mm -hmm. my musicality was co was concerned I, yeah. I i was very like single single-minded and i was not exploring as much yeah yeah so yeah yeah basically yeah um, well yeah. It, 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 yeah, and it's funny how history. yes because like you are so you're so good with jazz it's like you it, you did it so purposefully like i can't remember you in i can't think of you in any genre except uh jazz you know um and how how is yeah. it how is it like growing up in 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 you said in Swa in swaziland swaziland and yes. having to relocate yeah, and exactly. when did they the, the relocating um relocating to KZN, how was that, that transition? Was it easier for you, uh, um, you know, having new friends and studying afresh? Okay. Um, I was, okay, so uh, back home, I wasn't really like much on, like I told you, like we're very active, mostly in church, you know? Yeah. And yeah. with most of my close friends that uh, I had, most of them they actually came this side to study and in which mm. most some of them are still here and in Joburg, you know spread out so yeah. as far as friends from south africa from um swaziland um are concerned some of them i still have you know I, i'm still in contact with them and mm. um i didn't really have much friends in, in i wasn't that popular girl hey 
I was very, I was reserved. With that voice. I didn't like talking. I was just like that girl, you know, that girl that's always by herself. It's not, I was that girl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it yeah. makes sense. It, it so, makes sense why God um, it deprived me of. Sorry, say that again. Sorry, say that again. I'm saying it makes sense why I was deprived with such talent because I'd be singing everywhere. Like I wouldn't be talking. I'd be singing when talking. So you being deprived and with such talent, it it for me doesn't add up. Anyway. Sorry, my love. Please ask that again. With me. I'm saying that your talent, with your talent, I wouldn't be as reserved as you say you were, you know? Yeah. Like I'll be singing all over. Yeah. They'll be just hearing me singing yeah. all over, all the time. So anyway, <laughs> yes, continue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're right. I mean, um, yeah, I wasn't popular, Gaddafi. Hey? <laughs> I don't even know how I got here. But, <laughs> but <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, as far as the music side of things is concerned, um, I used to like go. I used to do like, um, you know, choral singing at school. You know, so yeah, that is as far as foundation, as far as uh, music outside of church uh was you know yeah. um so and then when i moved here <clears throat> the culture the culture is not very different hey than in Swaziland yeah. because you know Swaziland is a kingdom so and in Guazul Natal there's this culture uh culture based uh ethos you know like yeah. um so it it is very similar so it was very easy to fit in you know what i mean Right, and right. at the at the same time, I was at a at a search for for also for my for my roots because you know my family, my actual family, like my bigger family, it spread out during apartheid. So in a way, it was almost like I'm trying mm -hmm. to connect also with the other part of me. You know what I mean? So that's why mm -hmm. Durban is almost like my second home. You know, I feel really like at home it's my second home you know so um blending in was not difficult because also you know the language is similar and uh the culture itself it's it's to, it's it's not different honestly it's just the infrastructures and just being 600 kilometers away from home and yeah. that was basically it you know yeah <clears throat> so yeah yeah fitting in wasn't a problem honestly so when you studied music, was teaching initially your your goal or you were fo more focused on just being a performer? Yeah, I was more concerned about being a performer more than teaching. Teaching was like something that I was interested um, at a later stage. That is after mm -hmm. I obtained my, um, my, my degree. You know, yeah. Um, I realized uh, a very huge gap as far as teaching is concerned. Um, I realized a very huge gap as far as um, <clears throat> teaching voice is concerned. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because I also had my own struggles at the university. I felt that I felt that there wasn't much care given in in teaching voice, the actual instrument voice, like how you mm -hmm. would have your piano or your saxophone or something like that the like there are technicalities that comes that come with it you know and in which helps you to learn the instrument better and that is like besides the whole point of learning theory and stuff that that everyone can learn you know it's not that difficult but as for voice you know when you speak about the voice anatomy when you speak about breathing how do you apply a certain concept to voice and and how to treat your voice as an instrument not not just because you've got a good voice like a talent you know but more to say you can explore with your voice like there's so much you can explore with it uh using your voice you have all, beyond mm -hmm. your talent so yeah yeah those are the things that i was really interested and only jazz in a way was was able to 
to kind of like uh, open that uh, room for, for, for me to explore. Because you know, yeah. once you you find yourself in a genre, you say, "Okay, ngenzi reggae. This is reggae." Already, you just yeah. like, "Okay, this is this is how you need to sing. It. You you need to play. If you want to play the style, this is how you play it. This is how you sing it, and that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the mm. question of how do you progress from there? You know, it is mm. is is not really there because then you find yourself having to also be influenced by other styles. And yeah. incorporate it in the in the in the reggae style. So yeah, it, it's those yeah. kind of things. It's those kind of things, basically. And is it is it easy for you now that you're on the you're on the on the giving side than the receiving side? Do you find it easy to to teach? Like, um, is it not difficult for? I can say, man, because I I'm not I'm, I mean I'm not a musician. But when I listen to music, it's so complicated for me, and that's why I respect musicians because you you bring life into something that was not there before. So when you when you teach um, your your students, is it easy for them to grasp what you what you are teaching, like you did, or or do you find it more uh, more challenging with other artists? How how is that for you? Basically, how is teaching uh, for you? Uh, I, I, I couldn't get everything you were asking. Um, could you please just re repeat the the question again? Okay, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me perfectly now, clearly? I can hear you now. Okay, so what I'm asking is, how is it? How is it? How is teaching? Because now that you are on the receiving side. Do you find that it's difficult with some students uh, than it is for others, or is it simple to to teach um, to teach music? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I still it's cutting. Our <laughs> network is a bit cutting there. I didn't. Think that <laughs> uh, okay, let me do this. It's fine. Uh, but you can hear me. You can hear me now as I speak. Okay, guys, just just bear with us. Just bear with the internet. Um, We'll wait for her to um, wait for her to come back. All right, then she's back. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. Yes. Are you can you hear me? Can you hear me better now? Yes, I can hear yes. you. Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. So the question was, how is it how is it working for you right now? That you now that you are on the receiving side, you are the one who's giving the lessons. Do you find it easier or is it challenging depending on um students? Yeah. Um, actually, I find it more interesting. Um, like I find it exciting because it's almost yeah. like um, an exploration. You know what I mean? And at the mm -hmm. same time, um, channeling or exchanging information, but at the same time, discovering things as you go. So mm. it brings that uh, excitement as a teacher to know that, you know, there are certain things that you probably um, like never grasp the same way and in which now it becomes a bit more clearer. Yes, yeah. students are, are different for sure. Uh, every student is different and mm. every, every student comes from a different background and they grasp differently as well. Um, mm. Mostly, um, students, students I've had are students that are not really like talented, mm. but do have potential. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that is difficult. That is difficult mm. because sometimes you want to teach intonation. They don't even grasp what intonation is all about. They can't tell mm. if they're singing the key or not. You know, that's difficult. Mm. You play the <laughs> you play a note on the keyboard, sing this note, and it's just mm. another note that it that that's yeah. not you know played. So yeah, it becomes difficult, but you just have to have that little bit of patience. And if you see mm. if they are um like um if they are um you know, eager to learn, then you feel encouraged to teach them as well, you know? Mm. So, yeah. Mm. And when it comes to, I'm just thinking of, if I'm deaf to uh, to to keys, like you, you give me a, a B flat, I'm going on A sharp. How do you then teach them how to sing if they cannot hear the notes they're singing? Yeah. That is difficult. Um, there are different ways. Um, you need to find a way in which they understand pitch, you know. Mm. So mm. the moment you grasp how someone understands pitch, then you are able to then direct them to where they need to be. Um, mm. So sometimes other people are more visual, you know what I mean? If mm. I draw a graph that goes up and you yeah. imagine that's... The, the pitch is going up, you know, mm. then in your head, your head registers that, oh, this note I'm saying is actually down. I need to go up. You know what I mean? Mm. And then, mm. um, and you find that others, um, they, they, they can tell that they are not seeing in the right. Okay. Network is me, so it's Nam Klanji in network is Misa. Okay, then she's back. I it's network things, guys. Be patient with the network. We'll bring her back. Uh, add to stream. There, you are back. Yes. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. The, the network the network is kicking me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. So you were saying that others use graphics and others use? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just explaining yeah. that, um, you know, students are different and the way that they understand pitch is is is, is very different. Yeah. There we go. Now I have her twice. You have me twice. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's my twin. I had to remove the other one. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's go okay. to the next question then. So, would you All say right. studying? You would you say studying music is a must? And and, and I was, I'm asking that because you're already in the field. You're a musician. You're a performer, and sometimes you come across people who didn't study music, but they still, you know, are as good perform equally good good performers. I don't know if I should say mm -hmm. equally. But um, mm -hmm. so others would say, like upcomings would say, would he, but Uban Bani didn't go to school for music and they're still actually, they're doing good in the, in the industry. What do you mm -hmm. say to mm -hmm. that child who says that I can still do it? Like I don't have to go to tertiary. Without, without. And, yeah, without yeah. And, like, and study music, but can just jump into the industry. What would you say to that mm -hmm. child? Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, um, it will depend on what they are trying to achieve. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really believe that there are people who are very talented, who've never been to school, who are prodigies and 
who have added um, so much in the music industry beyond those who've gone even to schools, you know what I mean? Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you are looking to be a, 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 an educator, a teacher, or a music teacher, or to tra or to transfer information, then yeah. you need you need to go to school for that because you need the language. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you if yeah. you want if you want to to be an international musician and be mm. able to speak the same language as other international people then the only language is music theory you need to you need to be equipped with the music language you know what i mean yeah. so it's either yeah. you can you can you can teach yourself or you can go to school for it it's up to you but if you are mm. aiming at being an international musician then you need to be equipped with that language you know what i mean yeah mm. um so yeah, it, it really depends on that because also let's not forget how the other genres, like for instance, I'm a piano and um, house music and stuff like that. You know, um, most people don't go to school for that. They just fiddle it and if it feels good and that's it. And we can't take mm. away from that because that is also like a skill, you know, to make yeah. people dance yeah. and make hits and stuff like that, whatever. But it is in the in that particular culture that you find people doing such. You know what I mean? It's almost like mm. saying if you were to go to Botswana um, and you want to live in the in the villages uh, with the people there, one mm. one year they'll understand that you're not from Botswana and they'll they'll try to interact with you with different you know gestures, yeah. languages, whatever. But I mean, after five years, you should at least know how to say hello in Tswana and know to say, hey, yeah. I need this. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. At, the, at, at the end of the day, you need to be equipped with the language in order for you to fit in, in order for you to thrive. So the same yeah. thing kind of applies as well in music. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that's what I'm going to say about, about that. Yeah. It's very interesting that you... KZN is your second home, of which I thought it was, it's your first home. So KZN right now, to you, is like Joburg. It's like people who are originally from KZN coming to Joburg, right? So what I, what I need to understand is, what is it that you, when I, uh, I want to point at KZN, when they come to Joburg, they say there's uh, limited opportunities music-wise, especially in the industry, in KZN. When Nagdala or Lapo, like, you don't, because I thought at some point you'll be here in Joburg. Are there opportunities there? And, you know, because some are saying, we'll see, and I mean, for this, this is for the purpose of those upcoming uh, artists and aspiring to say, we'll see, if Muntu Vela Vele, like originally they're from KZN and they want to study music, should they consider or even plan, would at some point they will be moving to Joburg or those who have moved to Joburg is because they just didn't find the opportunities there. So for me, it's like, how do you find opportunities in music if I'm a KZN and they need a to come to Joburg to find opportunities here. Yeah. Okay. Um ish, that 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 topic is very like controversial because also um I'd like to think that for every person is different, you know. Um mm. KZN then musicians um Martin, let me not be direct, but let me just say um being in Joburg definitely gives you the, the 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 opportunities that every artist not just in South Africa in the southern parts even in mm. Africa when one, once you know that you are in Joburg you almost like at the like at the central part of what a music scene or African music scene is probably about, especially in the in the southern part of, of Africa. So um, 
definitely there are so many opportunities there mm. and and in which each and every musician can tap into that we have all but yeah. also there's also this thing when i got that that um it's not everyone who's able to access those opportunities because yeah. i've seen musicians moving to Joburg, you know with the hope that mm -hmm they will tap into those opportunities and it doesn't mm -hmm. happen. And some of them come back, you know, one thing for mm -hmm. sure that I have experienced in the little, little times I've gone in and out of Joburg is that Joburg is, is like a jungle. Mm -hmm. You need to know your story <laughs> when you yeah. come to Joburg, you need to yeah. be prepared. You need to, um, like you, you don't just go in there unprepared you need to have a plan to go to do yeah. it because it can it, it it can spew you out if you are not ready you know what i mean you can't just go mm -hmm. and you know uh yeah especially now you know long time ago there were even more opportunities now there's there's this competition like they, there are so many artists in Joburg yeah. who can pretty much yeah. do the same job you're doing but the question is, how are you different from them? You know what I mean? Yeah. What makes you special? Yeah. Why would the client go for you other than, yeah. than them? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think that as artists, we need to package ourselves and brand ourselves in a way that is attractive um, mm -hmm. to your clients, to your audience, or something like that. So if, for instance, you're going for a story, know that your story is going to impact or it's going to touch certain people in a way that they will commit to you you know like how people commit to um you know brands like okuchi or something like that people just they have yeah. this attachment even if it's so yeah. like an ugly bag but the fact that it has <laughs> that brand you want to buy it you know what i mean yeah now if we have the same mindset as well as artists that you need to develop your brand to to a point whereby people will will just buy your ticket not even yeah. knowing what you're going to perform whether it's good music or it's not good music. branding marketing is is the key in making you yeah. Yeah. who you want to be you know what i mean yeah. and then yeah. your talent and your skills sustain you because also mm -hmm. that people who have had those opportunities been marketed so well presented mm -hmm. so well accepted so well but they couldn't maintain why because mm -hmm. the talent the skill wasn't nurtured in a way that it would sustain them for the journey mm -hmm. so I, I think um as artists we just need to not focus so much on the creative side but also look at the business side of things because that's what makes us and sustains us you know what i mean yeah so yeah, yeah. i think i think those are those are the things we need to i couldn't say sit down and go to yeah job this hype about yeah Joe, go there with the yeah. plan know what you are going yeah. there for you know yeah yeah you released an album what what, what was what was in 2010 right um let's talk about that Sorry? could it be that's what that's what it was called. Uh, how was how it received? And uh, is, is the album, does it, still, does it still sell? Is it on the digital platforms? She can't hear me. You can't hear me. Hello? Nyangbo, now you can't hear me. You can't hear one, two. Just tell me when you can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you laughing. Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh, wow. That's all you can hear. So, your album, could it be the one you released in 2010? Let's talk about that. If you can hear me, you'll just respond. Can you hear me? Hey, oh. <laughs> I'm trying to decide whether I can hear you or not because I keep I keep hearing you. It it goes so like like a slow motion can you? It's so musical. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, let's wait for it until. Hey guys, I'm just texting, texting her. Yeah. Hopefully, there we she'll go. be able to answer this. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I was I was asking about your your album, your album that you released in 2010. If you can tell us a bit about that one. Gosh. Gosh. Babe, I still do. I'm still here. Uh, let me just tell her to log out and log back in because hello yes I'm here mm. I wish you could see this side Are you still there, sis? Yes, I'm here. So she can't see me. Oh, okay. okay. What you want to know? What you want to hear? Let's wait a bit, guys. We'll come back. Please, attention. Hey, hey. Are you seeing hey. me? Are you seeing me? Yes. She can hear everything else but when I'm talking. Maybe I should just sing these questions out. Pay attention. Hi. Uh, Okay, I sent her a text. Oh, thank you. Was that? Can you hear me? Yeah. What you wanna know? Nizula, guys, what's near school learning? Yeah, near school learning. Better near school learning. You're back. Mm. Say something if you can hear me. Okay, I can okay. hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, right. awesome. Great. Uh, so my question was about your album. Could it be the one you released in 2010? Can we talk a bit about that? Because like, I know I was not in the industry as yet, because if I was, I would have made it, made sure with the ear trend. So tell us a, a bit about that. Is the, is the album still on the, on the uh, digital platforms or is, it's gone then? Um, I heard something about the album in 2010. Yes, yes, speak about that. About the album. Oh, okay, with Hills Over yes. Head. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that album, Ned. Yo, 
like I told you, um, like when I when I end, when when I um, joined the band, uh, like I was really not in the headspace of being in a band or something like that. But the band needed yeah. a drama, and clearly I was I was the solution. Um, yes. And so it was it was an exciting ride, you know what I mean? Because yeah. at the time there weren't so many like female bands. So <clears throat> we were getting booked a lot because um, a lot of people like what we got. Network is an issue. Valentine is coming. Where is your person? You're back. Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, so I was yeah, I was saying about um the the album. Yeah. Um I think we recorded it in 2010 and um I think we were nominated for the 2011 Summer um Summer Awards. And um that was exciting, hey, uh because mm. it was the first time being in a band and even having having to travel with the band and and play in different places and also just the excitement um, that came along with it, you know. Yeah. Um. So it was really exciting. The girls were were amazing. A beautiful support system. So much that even some of them, I'm even friends. We are still even friends um, even today. You know, even after yeah. I left the the band. Um, yeah. Leaving the band uh, was 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 because I felt that at some point, as a musician, I was taking people were, were viewing me as a drama, and I didn't like that, you know, because <laughs> I was a vocalist and I was at school mm. learning to be <laughs> to be a, mm. a, a a jazz vocalist and stuff, you know. Yeah. Some dramas are starting to even compete with me. Like I'm just like, dude. <laughs> I'm not here for this, you know. Uh. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was interesting, yeah. hey. <laughs> yeah. But um, it was exciting. I, I, re I really enjoyed my my time with the girls, you know, and they continued yeah. then from even even after I left and stuff. So yeah, yeah, those are good times. You know, yeah. you you remind me of Kanye West uh, that he was a rapper. But because he was, he started with producing beats. So everybody saw him as a producer. That even when he wanted to become, and uh, now he wanted to start rapping because it, that's who he was, a rapper, from uh, from when he was young. But this thing, people saw him as a producer. Even when they signed him at the record label, he was still seen as a producer. So I get where you're coming from with your with your uh, the being called a drama when you're actually uh, originally a vocalist, you know? So um, tell me, what are the challenges that you have in the in the entertainment industry that you can point out now? Uguti, these are the challenges that you guys face in the industry. I hope you can hear me. In honestly, honestly, and in which this is something I even speak about with other people, is yeah. um, it's just being a woman in the industry, man. Like, wow. Sometimes it's sometimes it's it's so difficult when it's even not supposed to be difficult. You know what I mean? Um, mm. When when as a musician, like it it feels like it's almost like this thing of being a vocalist. You know, when you're a female and a vocalist, then it's a good mm. thing. You know what I mean? Like it's something that is expected. But the moment you are an instrumentalist, you're not as much celebrated and I, I don't know why you know what i mean mm -hmm. um it's almost as if you are trading in in a ground where you're not supposed to be you know but wow. it should be exciting because it just feels like you are 
you know, like you are you are breaking boundaries. You know, when I see an when I see a female picking up an instrument, man, it's beautiful because yeah, it's rare. You know, and there are always like the stereotypes as well behind um, how a female plays a pianist than a male pianist and stuff. Yeah, you even go there. You know what I mean? So yeah. She'll be back, don't worry. She'll be back. There you go. Hello. Yes, Hello. yes welcome back. Thank you. Yes. And uh, let's move to okay. the next, next okay. question. Yes. Do you think jazz music is, is supported enough in, in South Africa or in Africa as a Sorry, country? say that again. Do you think jazz is supported is enough, like is supported enough in the African continent as it is as much as it is out there in the African continent? Well, in the world globally. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I think jazz appreciators really do support jazz, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just that I feel that we haven't made people, um, or we haven't taught people enough and made them interested much about jazz. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Uh, we could increase the numbers. The ones that do support, they do. They honestly yeah. do. They, they check yeah. on their artists, they come to their shows. They even wanna buy CDs, you know, they, they're not mm -hmm. about, buying music uh, uh, in the digital platforms, you know? Yeah. So that should tell you how much they are so attached to the art form and appreciate it so much, you know? Yeah. But I feel like yeah. the younger generation is not that much exposed to it. And yeah. I also, I partly kind of blame the media in, in, in that as well, um, mm -hmm. because there aren't so many platforms that are open for, for jazz to be, for people to 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 know about, you know, mm. playing jazz on a Sunday alone is is not enough to teach or to yeah. help people listen what jazz is all about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, one of one of my dreams is to have so many buildings in like like across across the nation just for jazz yeah. music because I feel like yeah. you know that there's clubs for you know your i'm a piano number in any but just jazz because jazz is so it's so classic it's so it doesn't want yeah. you to be on hectic like on time yeah you know but it's such a classical yes. music that you you just want people to sit and listen and i, I feel like maybe yeah. south africa cannot afford to build such places and that is why they they yeah. keep closing down. I mean, in Joe work, we have experienced a lot of that in the past years. And that is my yeah. dream because yeah. that is one music that is so, it's so timeless. Yes. It's so like, you can move from generations to generations, you know? And that's where music yeah. comes yeah. from actually, whether it's gospel or whatever, all kind of music, it actually comes from jazz. And I think it should get the respect that it deserves, you know? I definitely um, but, agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely agree yeah. with you. Um, I was telling a friend of mine the other day that, um, you know, there, there are buildings, the government buildings that are abandoned yeah. and in which if they were to be given to, 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 to the art, to the artists or refurbished to accommodate the art culture or the music culture, um, mm -hmm. where it's just like a music hub and you know that, when you're in Durban, that's where the that's where the hype is at. When you're in Joburg, you know this is where how just like how Orbit used to be, you know when when you, when you went to Joburg and you knew you're going to Joburg, you can't go to Joburg as a musician without passing at Orbit and see what's going on yeah. because the, they yeah. already create like some sort of a, a culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what we need. We need a culture. The mm. moment we have a culture, then people 
in uh, people leave that that particular thing. So in in Davazemali, in Davazoto, how are we gonna get people? If it's embedded in the culture, people will support one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think it's one of the things that the minister should be uh, considering and placing as a priority. Anyway, we'll come to that. So you do you host workshops as well. How often do you host your, your workshops? I've been lazy. And you have <laughs> <laughs> at least you're honest <laughs> i've been lazy you know <laughs> leading up to the pandemic and covid you know there's been just so much working so much you just neglected that that other part yeah. unless it was like funded for and then yeah obviously you had to do you had to do that but yeah i would um actually we hosted a lot of like workshops uh via concert sa um and they would fund those those workshops and go to school and we present mm. what music is all about or even jazz mm. and just speak about the instruments and stuff like that nice. so that was mm. interesting um in future i really would love to host a lot of like vocal vocal workshops you know and yeah. just invite also other vocal teachers as well to come in and exchange knowledge and 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 just empower each other as vocalists without this thing yeah. of trying to com to compete with each other i like to think that's mm. that's where we've kind of lost it as artists instead of yeah. appreciating each other we compete and that's yeah. not the way yeah so yeah yeah and uh what lessons would you like to you know i'm sure there's lessons that you have that you have learned through experience of course and not lessons that you have learned through by education um yeah. <laughs> and what what lessons have you learned that you want you would like to share to those upcoming artists and aspiring i would say um if it comes to you don't think that you can't do it just do it mm. research about it dig deep into it and just do it yeah. because yeah. often at times we listen to oh no you can't do it because of a b c d oh no you can't you know if you want to be yeah. that drama just do it put the time in yeah. it research about it practice do it you can do it if you want to be a, a, a sound engineer do it man like i just feel like at times we get so discouraged and lean so much on other people's opinions that we, we we look down upon our visions our dreams what we want to aspire and we yeah. just lose it and there's always going to yeah. be that void because you never did it you know what i mean so of course. Just, yes. Yes. just do it yeah just do it it's like someone it's like like an art sorry to cut you it's like an artist yeah. who's always wanted to release an album like myself hey, yeah i'm going to do it <laughs> i'm doing it yes. there's a voice yes. you know i'm pregnant you must do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes you must do it we can't wait you know and know. um what would you like to say to a parent like you mentioned Uti, uh, parents are very reluctant in supporting your 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 vision especially if it's concerning the arts and this is not just a, an experience or something that we only south africans we are i mean our kanye now but they were like okay can you support it but there's people who even on their bigger platforms who Parents are like, eh, I wanna carry more. Like you can't do this because <laughs> yeah. there's no money there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But you have lived it. Yes, you did your accounting, and you wanted to. You did your accounting. You wanted to, um, mm -hmm. but you you also succeeded in the music business. What would you like to say to that parent? Um, that is yes, I feel yeah. you. Um, yeah. I, I would say, like, I, I have a student that I was taking last year. Uh, um, she is in grade nine, 10 now. And yeah. her mom, the way that she supports her child, she makes sure well, we'll see, she juggles both academics and the music. 
Yeah, but nah. if if mm -hmm. if your if your child if you know in your heart of hearts that your child is talented, I need sure get the kids who are just dreaming, but you don't yeah. see potential. You know what I mean? But parents yeah. do know when they see potential in their kids. You know, mm -hmm. then don't mm -hmm. let it go. Don't don't let it go because that might just be the thing that makes that child. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you mm -hmm. might as well just jungle between the two okay you know what i know what i'm 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 gonna invest so but more more of school and then also show that uh support as well on the other side so that the kids the kid can be encouraged to do better in school in order for you in order for them to do what they actually want you know what i mean mm. so mm. yeah i, I just I just advise parents not to suppress the feeling because the kids will always go for what they feel or what they, you yes. know, like what yeah. they dream of, you know, they'll always go yeah. for it. When you keep yeah. on denying them, they'll, they'll go for it. <laughs> you like it or not. That's true. So That's just true. support it. And at the same time, show the importance of academics as well as to, you need to learn your meds, your, your what, what, yeah. But at the same time, give them that allowance to explore what they actually want to do. So, yeah, I'd say that. And one thing I've always also wondered is music schools. Do you guys just teach the theory of music and the practicality? Uh, but do not do you guys not get into the business side of, of, the, of the industry? Mm, I think that's one thing that kind of like you know, that I learned on the side, you know, yeah. music business. Yeah. Uh, I think the focus, okay, there are, there are some schools that do music business, ne? Mm -hmm. and they, it depends mm -hmm. on the school. We have all. Um, yeah. I remember when I went to uni university, before it was a university, it was a, 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 a music tech. They were, yeah. <clears throat> they were part of duty, I think, at the time. And I heard from, um, you know, the likes of Usbu Mashilwane and um, who else? Ospem Gwengwe. Oh, sorry. Mm. Ospem Gwengwe, yeah, I think. Um, and then they were telling me about how they used to do like almost like 11 modules because they literally did almost everything that is musically related like cinematology, yeah. studio, music business, everything. But now when they had to go mm -hmm. to university, you know, universities that um, they focus so much on academics, not practicals. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so they had to do away with some of those modules, which were very helpful as a musician. And in which yeah. if you were to come out of that program, you'd be able to, your sermons are at SAPC, Mm. Uh, at, at the radio, you know. So mm. besides just being a musician or a talented musician, there were other yeah. things around the music and in which you would make money from, you know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, I, I think institutions need to relook at that and, and see yeah. that once they get, once your students get a degree, is it helpful to them when they get out of the university, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. So because when I when I manage, you are in in a position where you can influence that, you know. So I think you can put in that proposal for for the rest <laughs> of the industry because <laughs> it's important. Oh, you know. Oh, I just opened my school, man, and and just do it. Show me. <laughs> of course, you can do it, man. You can do it. You know? Um. Okay, so what message would you like to send to Unatim Teto, considering how the industry is right now? What message would you like to to send to him? I've got no words for the minister of has encountered. I, I, I honestly don't. Like yeah. when you've been failed so many times, I, 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 you know. And you know the painful thing is that when artists are are saying something you just want to be listened mm. to you know what i mean but mm. if there's no sense of listening you're just speaking to a wall and yeah. no action 
Mm. What can you do? This is the system that that's the reality of, of, of South yeah. Africa, you know. Yeah. So, um, honestly, I feel that uh, the minister should, you know, other people who have more vision towards yeah. the art and culture, you know what I mean? Because at this yeah. point, at this rate, it is not, you know, it is not benefiting the artists. So, yeah. Even his heart of hearts, he knows the truth. He will know that um, the people he, he, he says he serves, they're not all happy. And yeah. underline that all. I'm not saying yeah. some and some are, I'm not saying some are, are, are happy. There are others who are, yeah. eh, who are who are happy. There are others who are not. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah. he he needs to find a way to find that balance. Life is balanced, guys. Yeah. So let's balance yeah. and serve the people you 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 promise to go serve. You know, mm. that's what I would say. I feel like you guys so are much in can a very done. yeah in a in, in an abusive relationship and just stay there because you said I do. <laughs> You are married to this guy. You can't leave him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are married. Ish, my sister's on pair because I feel like sometimes it's 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 what we have kind of like signed up for you know as artists I, I feel i feel as artists we could we could do more especially us as well you know um i think also um you know when someone doesn't feel pressure now yeah. where you have a part to play at Tenini, yeah you have not you have not put in enough pressure to to move Absolutely. the mountains you know what i mean yeah. so yeah. uh nana nazi we we need to reflect and look we you know when someone comes oh shoot hold on let me just put battery before the thing switches off <laughs> sorry you know you know when when some uh sorry okay you know when someone consistently just steps on your toes just to see how yeah. far you can go yes. you know yes you know mm. keep stepping on your toes yeah. stepping on your toes you know yeah, I think there yeah. should be a point where you just like I paid, I young You know what I yeah. mean? So, yeah. but I, I don't think that we we have reached that point where we are saying, hey, young limazana, you know? Yeah. Uh, because we still allow certain things to to kind of happen. It's it's painful because also um, sometimes when you speak about it, you know what you you can be shut off. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think also there's that fear as well that you don't want to, you know, upset certain people and and mm. probably close your pockets. <laughs> and that's so. the thing. This industry is driven by fear. Um, and people yeah. they complain. Marawa complain and Emma complain. Like everybody hash. has. Yeah. A yeah. Hash, hash. So I think <laughs> yes, if this thing was done publicly and unitedly this guy wouldn't yeah. be sitting there at this moment or things would have changed and would have done yeah. what you what you guys wish you could do because you, he, you are the people that he's serving and you are the people who should be listening to what how can i help what do you need what should mm -hmm. i do what mm -hmm. how can we change mm -hmm. you know so i think yeah. as, as well the, the system is is it, it, it's set up in a manner with the and because they are sorted, they cannot unite with you because if they unite with you, then they're not mm. going to eat as much as that right now, you know? So yeah. um, I think it's that um, notion of the, the unity. Yeah, definitely. I agree. But but guys, as, as as that is is the concern, it mm. in a way mirrors uh, most of the problems we have in the country, you know? Yeah. Um, and in which... Uh, every department kind of found, finds themselves in, in this predicament. Yeah. It just mirrors the main problem, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I don't know we'll see how, not just as artists, but as a country, we could find ways in, in steering the ship towards our own benefit other than to 
um, to be the, 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 the collateral damage all the time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but again, yeah, that's, uh, that's another political point of view. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, before we close, is there anything that I've left out that you would like to probably share with the viewers? Uh, you've asked like, me so when many are you that, an album? Where, <laughs> like, Gaddafi, you know, I have stress with myself, myself <laughs> and I. You are adding on to that stress. But again, <laughs> yes, I, I, I am. Stress. <laughs> I am. I'm. I'm definitely. I'm definitely. I'm definitely working towards that, Gaddafi. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm. I'm trying yeah. to Sanganisa is it though? You know, because you know everything is yeah. money at the end of the day. You know. Yeah. Um. Mm. As far as the creative side, it's. I'm. I'm set to take out an album, but as far as the, the finances side of things, um, that has been one of the biggest challenge. You know. Um as an independent artist you find yourself to pay everything <laughs> if i was signed by it's easier but at the same time you have to deal with the whole thing of selling yourself you know um yeah. selling yourself short you know what i mean so um yeah so many dynamics but i'm working on it okay you'll be the first one wait. to know yes yes that would be lovely. <laughs> Your social media pages, where can we find you for bookings? I know you do corporate gigs, you do uh you do corporate gigs, right? Um yeah. <laughs> so where can where, where can they book you? Where can they find you? Email address, any social media platforms. All right. First, thank you so much for having me. And yes, the viewers can find me um on uh facebook twitter mm-hmm. youtube instagram as zoe the seed one word and mm-hmm. um and then if you would like to book me um or my band um you you can find me at zoe the at zoe the seed at gmail.com okay um and my number is should i get my number i'm, not, <laughs> I'm trying to think <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've got stalkers out there. <laughs> Why don't you just give my number because it's my business number anyway? Oh seven two oh seven two five two four double eight one six. So yeah, um, yeah, that's that's where you can find me. All right, cool. Thank you so much for um for being with us today. And you know, I have learned a lot, even though I'm not a musician. I'm trying to. And I hope Uti Nabo, you know, they have picked up a, you know, a, a few, a few things from you. But thank you so much. Yeah. It's a privilege. Well, as Uti, there will be a, a point where you are a celebrity there. You know, you are never aspirada there. We can't even reach you. <laughs> so for I know me, you will, like you, you, you will you will find a way. To, you will find a way to bring me down. <laughs> hey, what's up? <that? laughs> I didn't expect that, (laughs) but you're right. (laughs) No, I guess at some point, accountability is a good thing, you know. But yeah, there's a, there's yeah. another there's another sense of our accountability when it comes to <laughs> Gatafi Gatafi Manafi, and you you just you just have to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Suga, you killed me. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Cheers. All right, Susie. Okay. Cool. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. You too. Oh, guys, thank you so much for watching uh, today's episode. And I don't know, but in network, your yay problem as with it, Timon Mopilelo, what does he truly let him know? Um, if you want to be, if you want to come through as well, what's a secret interview, allow Kuminda was a color, 
you can you know how to reach me on facebook monka zafi zafi manafi and um that's the quickest way but gg manafi at gmail.com you can also email me there um i don't give out my number uh -uh. The button stalker, the button stalker. I never give you a number, Yaga. But anyway, you can reach me on Facebook. You can reach me via email. That's me signing out. Attention. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,